Welcome to Sad Boys, a podcast about feelings and other things also. I'm Jarvis. I'm Jordan. I sniff. I think I made like a right in the mic. Like right, right as you started in a way. That Jordan sniffing for 10 hours ASMR. <laughs> oh, it's somebody Sounds that to fall it. asleep to. But I do have quite a lot of ticks. Like uh, quite a lot of like, mm. like mild facial ticks. Those don't happen as much anymore. Typically like kind of later in the day or if I'm especially antsy or something. But uh, I also tend to look away if I do them. Or um, at least, like, you know, try and couch them in something. And I currently, I pick up uh, kind of one of a few rotates in, you know, seasonal. And right now it is, it is like, oh, okay. Pressing my upper lip to my nose kind of sensation and doing a little, like, like a Reddit laugh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> but just like unconsciously and by the time it's already coming out, I'm like, oh, but I'm on camera. Not something I've noticed oh. as a sitting aside, across from me. You've really looked at me more than <laughs> anyone. I, you've looked at me more in the last couple of years than any member of my family. For sure. Because oh, I for don't sure. see it. Yeah, I mean, same. It's like, we're on, we're on base. You don't look at me ever. You're always looking at the ground. Yeah. I, I have to look away yeah, from looking away. Jordan. I cannot look at you. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, I have to practice eye contact. Like in, in social situations, because uh, I want yeah. to look, look away, but I started realizing like I would be talking to someone and I'd be like looking away cause I'm focused on thinking. Mm. And there's like, the reason I look away is because of the visual stimulus being too much and then like just needing to think. But then when I look away at stuff, I'll be, the person I'm talking to will like look in the direction I'm looking and I realize I'm signaling to them right. that I'm looking, there's something to look at. I get and yeah, you're like gambling between like, is it a greater social faux pas for me to not look them in the eye yeah. or to lose what I was saying completely and then like oh be, yeah. what's Yeah, I mean being a person's hard. We don't talk about that enough. Shout Actually, out to anybody out there who's like existing. <laughs> <laughs> anybody out there that's mental. Yeah. Anybody who's gone with, got absolutely barmy with it. Oh man. <laughs> I started watching um House of the Dragon. Same. Have you not seen any seasons? You're starting from No the seasons, beginning. started okay. fresh. Whoa, started fresh. Same energy. First first thought I had was um, the the actress, the first actress I saw looked like a young, uh, a young queen of dragons. Very a, good casting. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I guess she's like related. I don't know how she's related uh, yet. Distant. Few, it's like few generations above. Yeah. Yeah. Like great 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 yeah but whatever. but like great casting and then the second thought was like this girl's 14 for sure look it up actress 24 blew Insane. my goddamn mind crazy i was like what do you mean you know what's weird is that obviously you know as the show moves along they do you know she re i th believe they do recast when there's like a flash forward i guess yeah yeah, yeah. i think there that, might be a flash forward that must be a weird position to be in that i guess is only the result of knowing that your property is huge and you're at least going to get a few seasons because you're on the Game of Thrones follow-up, which regardless of the eye that people have for the final couple of seasons, yeah. it, it was the biggest show on TV for a long, 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 long time. If maybe still bulk viewership, I don't know. That MASH. Uh, I feel like everyone always says MASH. Dude, shout out to MASH. I, saw, I finally looked up what, the, what fuck MASH was. I thought it was like maybe like a comedy about a guy that owns a bar. No. It's a war. <laughs> yeah, war. it's Vietnam, yeah? Hanging out at Vietnam, having a LARF. I'll connect this to Lost so that people can get their Ooh. bingo square. One of my other friends, uh, shout out Aaron, is uh, is watching Lost now. Respect. And she was talking about how she was live tweeting it and then had to stop because there's just too much happening. <laughs> and, and I was like, who are your favorite characters? And she was asking who my, some of my favorite characters were. And there are characters I mentioned where uh, she was like, wait, you like that character? And I'm like, let them cook. Let them cook. Let them cook. cook. I'm not going to say much more than that. Some of them, you don't have to let them cook. Uh, some <laughs> so of them, you don't have to let them cook. Some, some of them, the, uh, the studio didn't let them cook. <laughs> yeah. Some of them, the network didn't let them cook. Hey, uh, I think I've kind of feel like um, I wouldn't just abandon my son. I'm fired. I'm fired. <laughs> oh, Oh, I don't want to. That's sorry, right. I didn't even, Walt. <laughs> I, just, I came up with the idea of cooking. Oh, <laughs> and you um, fired me. But they would always mention MASH in the official Lost podcast back when Lost was airing. And that was like where I learned the most about, uh, about MASH because Carlton Cuse uh, was old. He was an old white guy and he just never shut up about MASH. And I think that that's in my mind. I was like, if you are 60, 70 years old, you just talk about MASH all the time. My parents loved MASH. Uh, I hated it. It was such a boring show. Is it the one, the theme is like, 
There was a bullfrog. Was that no. Was that? The the theme is uh, <laughs> instrumental. It has no um, lyrics. Uh, until now. Robert Altman is the famous director <laughs> who directed <laughs> Oh, that. yeah. Weird. <laughs> He's like a very famous like 70s director, but he, it, it like, like it's, is takes Mash place. like naturalistic hanging out in Vietnam? I think it is, right? Isn't well, it a lot of hanging out? Well, they're in the out? Korean War. Korean War. But it was made during the Vietnam made War. during Vietnam. As a, as a sort of like. Anti-war thing, right? Anti-war thing. Yeah. Uh, but, and then everyone was like, yeah, okay, anti-Korean War. And like, no, anti the all of the wars. Don't do the current We're one. talking about all of Okay, but Vietnam's mm. good, right? We're doing this one. Oh, the the reason I, I sent this is because uh, the first thought I had was they got some names in this fucking show, Shut dude. Up, dude. Baby, tell me what you want from me. There was Brainer, Lena, Lenor, and Rhea. Rainice, Rainera, <laughs> Baylon, and Bela. I was like, why does this go so fucking hard? It's this, really good. This one really did feel like, you know, George Martin, he loves his lore, he loves his base universe. Wait, can we shout out the creator on that real quick? Uh, Lamar Carlos underscore on TikTok. Incredible work. Well, question. When or why, I guess, was the, the catalyst for you wanting to make more eye contact? Did you get feedback or something? Or you saw someone it's else? Just, it's just, I'm one of those people who's like, um, every social interaction I have, I have like a debrief with myself mm. or, or it just comes back. It's like a recurring. The hangover? The hangover. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Where I just go, what did I do and why did I do it? <laughs> and um, Who am I? And I think that that was something. And it was also just seeing people look and having to go, oh, sorry. Right. Okay. And then, so it's almost like I caught myself because I was um, having to be like, no, sorry, I just do that when I'm thinking. Yes. Okay. And, and, and then also hearing other people, there there have been people I've been around where they've complained about someone who like wouldn't make eye contact with them. Mm. And I'm like, okay, bad. That's bad. Not making eye contact. People don't interpret that as what I'm thinking about it as, which is like, oh, sorry, I got to think. Yeah. They think of it as like, oh, I don't want to personalize with you. Maybe this is a weird comparison, but I sort of feel like, so I was very similar. I'm okay with eye contact now, but the main reason is that I, when I started a Patreon, my Cole, my very first manager, yeah. week one, just pointed out that I was just just not with him. I was, because I was like thinking I'm nervous, I'm trying to engage. Right. And, uh, you know, we'll slip up, our brains are wonky, everyone's brains are a little wonky. Does it feel like other like ADHD or, or neurotypical behaviors like like losing track of time, being late, and not wanting that? Oh, actually, better example: um, entering like a depression spiral or just energy completely dropping uh, without you anticipating it at all, and then having to cancel plans or really wanting to cancel plans, and not like high priority plans, but just like grabbing lunch or something. Yeah, canceling like, the day before. And it is not reflective of my care or how I feel about you. It is just like a, it's a, if it's okay with you, it's just going to kind of be a factor because I haven't figured this out yet. Right. And I get why on first glance, it does feel like yeah. a, it, a disregard. It's like, uh, I'm not making the eye contact, but it's because I'm actually very invested in the conversation and I want to make sure I'm engaged with it. Right. I'm not pretending. But I get the human instinct to be like, well, they cancel on me. They must not like me as much. Or right. make eye contact with me. They must not care as much. Yeah, exactly. It's It fills the same void. And, and there's no hard and fast solution. I love Zoom calls because I don't make eye contact with anyone. I don't look at the, I don't look at the screen usually. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking directly up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, usually I, my laptop is closed and I'm late. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Or if I'm at, you know, we had a meeting recently where there was like a big screen and some people were calling in and there were people in person. And it's like, I kind of preferred to like look at the screen because I didn't have to look at people and then oh the meeting then yesterday, talking. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah yeah but but I still now I like do the thing it almost feels very mechanical where I'm like checking in with everybody and that's what I have to remind myself to do it's like okay as long as I'm checking in with everybody then they and it's easier for me to talk to a group of people than it is to talk to for one individual person because I don't have to have unbroken eye contact for any mm. extended period of time with one person and if you want to do the engagement part, you then you're know, like, I spun the plate. Hey, I'll take the plate. You take a little dab around, bring the yeah. plate back when you want me to take the plate for a little while. But on the complete opposite side, I make a lot of, I, I, I have a staring problem where when I'm scanning, I like always look at people in the eyes. 
Um, like not even necessarily in a conversation, just, just looking around. I, I like realize I'm doing it. So I don't do it if that makes sense. But I just know that my instinct is to stare. Like if I'm like walking down the street, I'm looking at everybody. Yes. Yeah. Um, oh, when you, when you know you have some effective sunglasses on ooh. that the summer can ruin my brain. If I'm wearing sunglasses enough while I'm out and about and I'm free to stare or oh, I'm free to purr. And I don't know why I do it. Like it's a, uh, I think I do that too, but do you ever like accidentally make eye contact with someone in a crowd and then you feel weird about it? And then I was like, oh, they probably think I'm like weird. But then it's like they did the same thing that you did. Exactly. They were also making weird yeah, eye contact. Yeah, because I used when to you do start yelling, you're bad, I'm good. I they remember in high all. school, I had a crush who sat like two seats to the right of me and... I remember I would just always like look <laughs> at them and I'm like, why? I, why am I, I like realize it's like so embarrassing in retrospect that I would always just like glance over and I'm like, it's so obvious that that's what I'm doing. And I'm like, ugh. How why? old are you in this? Uh, like 17, 16, 17. Mm, that is the puff. That's like the exact point in time where you still have that weird like um, membrane around your head where you don't realize what you're doing and you're not aware of the weird shit. You might end up like like just being completely slack-jawed or like looking at something. Yeah. But you're also old enough to know how weird that is. You know how you stand when you're a five-year-old because you're not self-aware? Yeah. And like, it's not too weird, but you know, if you ever see like, you got like a, uh, my niece will do this. She'll kind of just stand and her arms are just like yeah. kind of flopping. You're just and like fidgeting around. and like kind of learning the, it's almost like when you, I feel, okay, this is my little pet theory. I feel like you have a little bit of access to that feeling of lack of dexterity if you try to write with your non-dominant hand. Because you're like, oh, suddenly I'm not in fine control of this anymore. Or I thought I knew this. <laughs> if you try to do, you know, anything with your non-dominant hand, like throw a football or something that you like develop dexterity and muscle memory for at an early age and just think of without thinking of it or play a video game in a, in a like a lefty flip on Guitar Hero or swapping your Wiimote to the other hand. Playing a left-handed arcade stick. Left-handed like arcade that. stick. Like all these things, they really like going through that arc of uh, I have, do not have fine motor control to like getting better at it is like a really, it's really rewarding. Um, but it's also kind of crazy just to think about how many things you develop over your lifetime that are just like muscle memory that you're like, just have fine, fine control of. I think it feels like a good reference point for like, I don't know, social and political bias where you just believe, you believe something so comfortably like, Hey, yeah, everyone can read. You can just read. You look at the thing, you just read. Yeah, come on. Everybody knows the same principle I do. Everyone can understand that. We're all not racist, but some people are pretending. Like, no, some people are very, very, very sincerely racist. They love doing it. They enjoy it. And they're good at it. Yeah. They're good at being racist. It's interesting. And it's like such a, um, it makes it a much higher lift to just be like, well, I'll use facts and logic to change their mind. Yeah. And like, you're actually... Sh should be writing with your other hand. I'd say like, one I of don't my want to do that. biggest flaws oh, as, as hang a person. On, I'll get my list. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, 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 no. This face, one's for face, me. Uh, way of being, personality, no, not funny. Not these. Uh, wrong, wrong. Oh, that's the thing one I'm of sensitive says, about. One of them just says wrong. Uh, is, is thinking that with the right, like, argument or logic, I can, like, convince someone that of like my way of viewing things. Like I'm not gonna right. be able to argue with like a racist or whatever, but the amount of times I've been like, no, you just don't understand where I'm coming from or you're just wrong and you just need to be corrected. And then to someone is it of no, I, I just, I think I assume that someone else is open-minded to hearing a dissenting viewpoint and, and changing their mind because I am, because I always assume that I'm wrong until proven otherwise. Like I have to, you know, have a lot of evidence of something before I like am fully in belief of it, it for most things. <laughs> you, but you do have too much uh, tolerance of uh, people in giving bad you faith. bad faith, the criticism faith. online. Yeah. Uh, I always talk to the pastor like, what do you think of this? And I'm like, oh, we should like 
beat him up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you should like, like fine with this. This is well. I'm like, well, maybe there's like a modicum of truth in the message that said you. I hate you, and you yeah. should die. And I'm He's, like, well, maybe there's. I've given them a reason to hate I me. Wonder, I wonder if I should follow up about critical feedback. And I am uh, cutting up a Vogue magazine to use the letters to show it's not my handwriting, and then sending them in as a threat. <laughs> um, it's from my account. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, a baby in my life. Oh, congratulations. I have a friend who's a baby. Oh, okay. Congratulations. Yeah, how old until it's a friend? You know? Yeah, okay, because my very two of my very, very good friends had a baby. <laughs> Is that baby babies. my friend now? <laughs> Not yet. Because he doesn't, that baby doesn't know they about friendship. They have to friendship. consent to the friendship. Your friends, they, they might be It's like you forever. can send a friend request, but they can only be, they have to be a certain age before they can accept <laughs> the friend request. I, th- I feel like even if they, they can be like 25, and I feel like if you've known them since they're a baby and you're still friends with their parents, that's my friend's Automatic. child, my friend's son. Yeah. Well, um, my friend's son's in college. It's interesting because it, you don't think about how like much babies have to learn to do. Like they don't know how to digest food. Oh, they're dumb. They're so stupid, and <laughs> yeah. they're broke. They don't work. Well, that's not what I'm they're saying, not but... strong. They're zoomers. They know no jutsus at all. <laughs> yeah. They like literally. They lose they every don't single know arm the way wrestling. Of the samurai. They don't, know the the, the they don't follow the code of Bushido whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Let's not joke around that, that though, because that is a code that I follow. You've got to build a Bushido deck in Magic. That's Because there's a keyword, Bushido, from a Kamigawa block back when I was in middle school, and it's all about samurai. What if I turn up and I'm so serene as a result? Yeah, it's I like taught like, me to find my, my truth. I feel self. like maybe the best gift I could ever give you, back when you, know, you would have uh, patron goals, like if we ever hit a hundred thousand dollars a month on the patreon we would buy you a replica samurai suit like a full <sighs> full samurai gear like plate mail oh chain and i'd mail. have like full mannequin in my living room where it sits <gasps> yeah no and then I, we would have to you would enroll you in classes to no. like actually learn the way of the bushido we install if that's, if that's not uh if that's like ethical to do <laughs> install a concealed compartment in my uh in my house right mm-hmm. i push a book in and it opens and the full equipment is ready. Yeah. I have. And it's got like lights. It's got like all spotlight oh, and dude, stuff. Do, 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 do. They yeah, always yeah. be like that. There's like LED full lights katana. inside of the mask. Wakasashi available for indoor combat. Mm-hmm. My full longbow is there. I try using it. I trip too heavy. <laughs> I you fall on the. You just step in and it adheres to your body. Oh, oh you're, yeah, all, lean back. you're <laughs> samurai Iron Man? <laughs> oh, Wait, hold fuck. on. <laughs> we might be onto something. But Marvel? <laughs> this turns into that guy that bought the Power Rangers suit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love him. I mean, that I guy's that awesome, happy. though. We, we let the record show that that guy who, uh, first of all, was a really good sport. He, like, commented on the podcast episode. I think he's the best because... I am such a big proponent, especially as someone who's like, we've been, get, I've been getting back into magic. I've always, I've never not been into Pokemon. Just like really like keeping that part of you that's like connected to your childhood, I think is really special. And um, I think irony poisoning, it's, yeah, it's fun to be, you know, goofy shit posts online, whatever. Anybody that's still overly invested in like, um, I am fluent in sarcasm, like just too in it. Yeah, is kind of robbing themselves of sincere joy. Even if you don't want to like publish it, make it public. Dude. Yeah, to cringe is to be free. To be cringe is to be free. And yeah, that said, I like yucking some yubs. A little bit. <laughs> now and then. A little yeah, bit. It doesn't have to be valid. So you just be like, I like this band. I'm like, no. <laughs> it's actually They're wrong. Bad. They're like, yeah. why? Then I haven't listened to it, but you're I know. I did recently meet somebody who I was taking it back a bit where like, I would say that I like something and they'd be like, oh, I hate that thing. Are we still doing that? It and feels I was like, like that oh, like school thing feels like. But I don't know if it, I like don't know how strongly they feel it. And I just like smile and nod because I'm like, how much can someone really mean this? Uh, or like the, you should see some of the replies I get because on my dating app profile, I have a thing about how I don't like olives, but I'm like being a little bit hyperbolic because hyperolic. Are you being Hi- hyperolic, I think? Per, I'm sorry. I could be here all day. Hyper Olive. I'm <laughs> um, moving around to try a to little it. bit hyperbolic just because I know it'll incite a response. But the... It's pickup artistry. 
type of responses I get sometimes, people are like, like personally offended that I don't like olives, which is like very silly because I could have any number of valid reasons for not liking olives that are like related to like, I don't know, dietary restrictions or acidity or something. Who knows? Just, well, I could do it. I don't like olives. The taste is fine. They killed my entire family. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah. Oh, and you oh. don't know. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. And like you have no, your palate is underdeveloped. Yeah. <laughs> is it, do you think it's a genuine people being, have there ever been any that is like, you're stupid? Yeah. Like not riffing. Well, I have, I have gotten that, but I do think they're still riffing. It's just that like some people don't know how to riff or have mm. a completely different riffing strategy that I don't, it's like a nagging type situation. Yes. And maybe sometimes I, I, uh, I got a message the other day from um, a friend I haven't spoken to in a while, but we were catching up and they were like, what do you think of this hinge message that they sent? And the feedback I gave them is that it's just so long. Mm. It, it had the um, structure the uh, of, of, of the paragraph structure and length of a breakup text. Oh. <laughs> or like a waking up at 3 a.m. and the girl sent you all gray. You know, you're like, uh, what's going on? What, uh, yeah. One of those. And I think the main reason is just like, that is a riff style and it's not necessarily an objectionable one. And it's kind of funny. Like if we're all in the group chat and then one of us just goes really hard on writing a long extended text, as long as it's not an important conversation going on. And it's just like, I'm talking about myself. <laughs> and, and sometimes it can be fun. I don't know if everybody else enjoys it, but if I just write up like, yeah, I've been studying the way of the blade and then provide the Wikipedia link to B Bushido or something. Mm -hmm. It is a, a context sensitive. And I want to operate on the assumption that most people don't want say like a super acidic kind of riffing like like you're talking about or an overly long bit of riffing there's like a default you can't back and yes forth. you can't like take such a big swing like frame one start corny yeah start like a little bit start corny. a little bit and like work your way into it mm -hmm. or if like someone gives you you know it's like sometimes i'll kind of try to match someone's freak, so to speak, you know, <laughs> but sometimes beats are the freak. If they I'll speak the, the geek. freak, then I'm, I might be the geek of freak. <laughs> Hello. Why are you blocking me? <laughs> Did I give you the ick? I, then I give you the ick. <laughs> I have. Think about that every day of my life. <laughs> I have, um, maybe acid reflux right now. I don't know what it is. I'm like, have such a like discomfort in my, throat and like lower chest region broken heart and it's from the losing my love <laughs> <laughs> to olives <laughs> yeah is it do you feel worse about green versus black olives by the way uh i think black olives are less uh pungent Jeez. so so green olives f black well my olives, story C i think minus. i've told it before is that once in college i ordered a pizza except for i accidentally Either it was my accident, probably, or the accident of the, the pizza shop where they put green, I wanted green peppers and they put green olives everywhere and I picked them all off and it still just tasted so strongly of olives. Yeah, it's over. And so it's uh, cooked. You can try and wipe the sauce off the pizza. But that was, yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't get the taste of olives out of my mouth by brushing my teeth. <laughs> it was so strong. I actually don't mind olives. Uh, but it's just fun to have a strong opinion on a dating app because it gives people something to talk about. With with low stakes. With low stakes because that's it's like a, not really important. I wonder if that's... And, uh, but then when we treat it with importance, then I don't know if they're joking or not. And I don't, it's, I'm nothing wrong with strong opinions and some people even like arguing about arbitrary stuff. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't mind like a silly back and forth, but I don't like a, I don't like debate. And I do, I do have some friends who yeah, I don't like less debating. these days, but like have had a habit of like, you get into something that's pretty arbitrary and the heat kind of starts to rise and you get part way through and you're like, this is, can I just, this is okay. It's kind of weird. And they're like, yeah, no, we're just debating. I'm like, I don't uh, want to do that. I don't want to do that. I had an experience recently where, uh, we, uh, we're playing magic, the gathering, which we'll talk about, I call you a nerd, but, but uh, <laughs> but everybody was like joking about me in a way where I was like, okay, it's like starting to feel like a pile on. And I'm like, can we just, I like want to keep rolling with the punches, but I'm also like, can we like take the heat off of me for a sec? Like I'm trying to give signals and like that didn't feel great. Um, because I was being like, okay, all right, let's change the subject. Um, 
And, but then like, I sort of talked to the friends afterward and it was like, oh, like I was under the impression that like we were just joshing. And I'm like, for sure, I do feel that way. But it was just kind of like unadulterated, like just joking at my expense. And I was like, I can only take so much of that. I need a little bit of variety. Yeah. You know? But it's like, it's kind of like that example of like, hey, canceling plans, context, knowing who you, knowing your habits. I will try and be as understanding as possible. Yeah. But uh, there's a tolerance level. There's like yeah. maybe I'll, if someone could like know that maybe that's wobbling me, I don't want to be the person that's like, stop. Stop yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, because I want to. I'm like smiling and nodding, and I'm like, all right, single, okay, let's let's move on. Turning away the eye that's got a single tear. Yeah, out yeah, of it. yeah. Let's. Uh, and I, I don't know. I need to like learn the proper way to give that signal without like trying to ruin the vibe. You know. So, you've you've taken a bit of the the magical pill. I've heard. I've taken the magical pill. Uh, I should set uh, right before though, because I don't know. Oh, please. Jacob, I sent you an image. Uh, we'll pull that up in a sec. I just want to say this is related to something we've been working on for a while. It's been kind of a tease. Okay. Are we, t- are we talking about that in this episode? Is it going to be? Well, I actually don't know what you're talking about. Uh, so I think we did a thing for it yesterday. Oh, um, we have teased that. Yeah. Here is an image related to that. I have been pre-selected for ah, a Venmo yeah. credit card. I remember this. Based on my account history, no impact to my credit score if declined. Don't like that. You said pre approved no. So you've been selected to apply. to apply. But see, previously oh. you'd been pre-approved, so I'm wondering if there's something that happened to your credit. Well, I was pre-approved for PayPal. Oh, you're, oh so, well, so Venmo and PayPal are connected in that PayPal owns oh, Venmo. So they might be talking to each other. They noticed you didn't you didn't go for the PayPal credit card. So now they're starting to... Oh, you think from a place of resentment they've... Yeah, they've they're like, well, you can fucking apply to a Venmo card. <laughs> You've been unapproved. You don't want to be... Yeah. We disapprove. Of we you disapprove of you. of you, so you can apply to some Venmo shit. Uh, that's it. No, nothing, no other announcements or teasers hey of man, anything. Hey, man, congrats. Thank you so much. In the vein of us talking about um, being... Ew. Let me I see that to, one. I had to Ooh. do blood work yesterday. Was you, did you get your burn? How did your burn turn? Oh, let's see. Jarvis got singed. Oh, look, it's oh, black. Oh, badass. Jarvis got singed at the merch shoot by a live steamer. Yeah, it was a very hot steamer. It was like steaming hot. And uh, he, he uh, was like, ouch. And then was like, I'm totally fine. And we're like, <laughs> no, maybe like. Well, because I was like, I, yeah. I I was a little bit like, did I just imagine that it was hot? Because everybody was like, well, the steamer is off. And then I was like, it is plugged in. <laughs> Uh, but then, I, then you, I was like, put lotion on it, and you're like, it's a part of my body. I don't care. About yeah, I don't care. Which is a very it. solid point. I got actually. That's happened. But I did put lotion on it. I got, but I didn't put lotion on. I don't know if anybody's right noticed now. these, there's no point of these. Are this fucking long ass and like. These oh, I was going to ask you about that. It's, it is. I I uh, had uh, as I mentioned before. I break constantly break glasses for some reason. So I buy them in bulk. And I a uh, few weeks ago, whenever I first got these. Uh, I broke those glasses, the little metal portions were there, and then one of the lenses came out and that part was broken, and I, they just scratched me here. Ooh. I don't remember them scratching me here at all. Ooh. And it was completely superficial, no blood, no nothing. Oh, whoa. Hours, supposedly this is also like maybe an EDS thing. Could be, could be. But hours and hours later, just, I don't know, month old scars at this point, no idea. Thankfully, it's part of my body I don't care about. Yeah. And glasses go in the face. So <laughs> it yeah. could have been a lot worse. I was, no, I, I forgot to ask you about it because the first time I saw it, I was like, is everything, like, what happened? Have I always had to be used yeah. to like, uh, To be fair, this one actually, there's scars are in the same area that are no longer there. Like, I, I accidentally got one across here and my mm. tattoo was pissed off because it was the same day. Oh. Oh, sorry, Q. But yeah, I, I, shame. in the vein of, uh, Things that you thought you were past in your life, and then when, like, uh, when you're younger, being unconscious of things, and then now as an adult, being like, you got, you can't do that. You can't. This is embarrassing now. I went to a friend of ours's birthday the other night on Friday. I had made them a, a little gift. I made them little uh, magic cards because they're, they're avid magic players. It's a card game. No, I'll have to look into it for losers and me. 
I love magic. I was watching the OC and oh, yeah. they talk about it. Oh, yeah, was just to get that clip. Oh, there's a clip of Adam Brody saying that he loves magic. Love the Gathering. magic. Been kind of obsessed with really it. Really intimate. Yeah. Um, but I went to this. I went to this party and I made them these little magic cards and I wasn't satisfied with them. Oh. So instead of going on time, I ended up turning up super late. It was a big old busy party. Went late. Turned out to be fine. But I'm like. I don't like them. These aren't actually viable. I don't think because I just made proxies, just did them based on other ones. I'm like, right. No, I want to make them myself. And I spent like an hour and a half scrolling through what would actually be a viable card. It's I'm sure it doesn't meet the Jedi curve, but it is, you know, I think they're at least interesting to play with, use them in different contexts. I mean, these little cards. And the whole time I was doing that, I'm just, I'm sipping away on my IPA. I'm drinking stone. It's my favorite. It's not as high on the on the ABV as my other favorites, so I, you know it's nice to take it's a sippy, to sip. play some eighties, lock me up, sleeve some magic cards, lock me up, lock you up, lock me. I, I killed a man, lock me up. It's gonna ruin the tour. It's <laughs> 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 the uh, magic world tour, yeah, or whatever. The Vegas. The, yeah, I got a little tipsier than I typically would. You know, I'm a big, I'm a big boy. I got. I got, I got some some like decent tolerance because I'm just sipping and sipping and then going like ooh and then should this have tremble? No 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 that would that would be unbalanced unless I lower the toughness and then maybe <laughs> and, you're uh, becoming a game designer and then I finally started making other ones I was just having fun and I'm like oh shit I'm late I should go it's a costume party I barely have anything I'll try and improvise something improvise it head out arrive typically I don't drink that much at parties because I only like IPAs these days. They have exactly the IPA I like. They were like, we I'm sipping stone. more. Yeah. I knock out a few more. I'll admit oh, no. it. Yeah. Uh, hanging out. A few friends of ours. Iffy and Emily are there. Yeah. We're having a laugh, chatting. Having My first time. time hanging out with Emily. Oh, yeah. Emily's and so great. We, we, you know, tight and everyone's chatting. I knock back maybe three, maybe four more. So. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know. What to oh, do. no. Now I'm drunk okay. on booze. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Alcohol wise. Neat. I reckon don't drink like this. This is a, regardless of whether or not you're a drinking person. I can't drink like this. It's I not have, sustainable. It's I not have good. less than half of that and I just start to feel sick. I feel sick right now. It ruined the uh, the next the tour. It ruined the tour the <laughs> world day. Uh that was that was actually when I started watching uh, House the Dragon because I was so hungover you, I couldn't. Do you want to know my side of this? Which I uh so I we were talking about not turning up to things yeah. uh, when we're tired. I had a bit of a crash because I was working on some magic decks also, but for the uh, Nerd, I was lying. I would never um I don't know when it comes out, but I was on uh, Commander at Home. It's probably I, out now, but no. I don't know. Yeah, because they w w we didn't have like specific dates because they've got to move some stuff around for some release schedule and stuff, but uh, for sets because they did some pre-release stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, I was ba burning the candle at both ends. I was driving back and forth to like Frank and Sons collectible show, grabbing cards, grabbing singles, testing. I was so exhausted. And I, did, I wanted to take a nap and I had something else to do at 8 p.m. And then I was going to show up at the party later, but I took a nap at like six and then I woke up at eight and I canceled my eight o'clock plans and I canceled going to the party. I just sent a photo of me in bed and I was like, I don't think I'm going to make it. I'm so tired. And then I slept for like the next 13 hours. Um, but then later I caught up with them and the, this side of the, the story was, um, and uh, if if this is the grand shame, you can you can let me know, but uh, or slash we can we can cut it. But it was like Am did, I about did, to be embarrassed by the thing I did. No, 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 oh. no. I don't think so. Oh, great. I think it was just that you were out late. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. Because they were like Jordan showed up at 12, 12 and then was, we were up till six. Oh yeah, no, dude. I I I was operating on the schedule of. All of my most fun gay friends. <laughs> I was I was a metropolitan area gay friends out on a night hours. Yeah, great time. I think it's because I I was operating on a yeah I spent four or five hours at a party and because I left down to that time and they go late. I feel like our friends these days don't tend to go super I know, crazy. I'm late. an early. I'm I'm usually now the first to leave of any function. Early to. Bryce, <laughs> I'll, I'll like kind of arrive a little late, but then I'll stay in my pocket of like an hour or two. And then I start to think about the sleep I need. And I start to think about the time I need to wake up in the morning or something else that I need to do. And then I just leave. Yeah. That's, um, uh, cow coward. I mean, it's coward. I think I'm a coward. Yeah. It's for, I mean, me, uh, officially trained a machine. <laughs> True. <laughs> that's the craft. Um, I got drunk real good time. 
meet lots of people, have a lovely time. Things are getting quiet, realize what time it is. I head home. Got to get Foxy out of her creek. She's hanging out in the creek. I take her out, want to go on a quick pee before she goes to sleep. Because she uh, always like doing that real quick. It's sunny, it's bright. We're out in the world. She gets really excited. Because I've been going a little longer than I would typically go out. She's all psyched up. And we're immediately going on a walk. So her adrenaline's through the roof. I'm barking. <laughs> we're both howling at the moon. You're both jumping up out. and down. We're howling at the moon that isn't out anymore because I got back so late. <laughs> we go out and ju- sometimes when Fox is, she's a little, little wee one, she gets so excited that she just starts running. And uh, right now she, uh, she was uh, on, the leash was on her collar, which is not normally, normally she has a harness. Right. But we didn't have that. Uh, I think the harness got lost and we bought a new one. The rate that she started running, I was like, whoa, careful. I don't want you to get hurt. So I kind of, I walk a little faster to keep up with her. She's got stubby little caterpillar legs. She's not going to go crazy fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going crazy fast. And I, in my drunken state, I'm like, I'm Usain Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> you are bolting? I'm wearing l- loose, ill-fitting, slipping, no traction house slippers. <laughs> uh, and white pants and a white shirt. Oh, yes. Because it lined up, I was, I was trying to dress like a peasant. <laughs> it was a, a fantasy-esque costume body. I try running, I try catching her speed. I fail dramatically. She stops to look at me, because she'll just do that. Almost loops me. I lose a shoe, flies off, I fall over. Oh, no. Funniest image in the world, by the way, is someone falling over and their shoe's coming off. Yeah. That is like, true. that's part, like, it's like a cartoon punching someone up and their shoes stay there yeah, and there's yeah, an outline yeah. of them. It's like running through a wall and your outline's like, hilarious. I fall. When I say I ate shit, uh, it, it was, I'm so glad I was drunk so I wasn't embarrassed till right. the next day. Broad daylight. Everyone that's up and around are people with like real jobs and are going places. Right. And often, you know, people with families that, you know, understand the parameters of falling over. Like their kids will fall and they look like, oh, could you, do you need help or something? Yeah. Fell, that fucker's from there. Oy. A really nasty looking one on here that I won't even show Ouchie. the camera. It's nothing crazy. The long one, I, the, all the no one gamers out there, if you got like, blown up in like Halo 3 and when you fly through the air, your arms are doing this. Yeah. I felt like I had the same like physical consistency of that. Hit the ground. I'm pebbled up. I'm thinking to myself, I should start watching House of the Dragon. I should fall asleep without brushing my teeth or putting my Invisalign in. That's what I need. That's Yeah, that happens a lot to me. I, 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 go, I go, I limp home. I realize my white pants are unwashably bloody. <laughs> like there's just nothing I can do with it. Throw them away realized two days later that I threw them away. Oh, no. I go like, why are you doing white pants? I haven't been to wear those. Yeah. Gone. And, and here is where the great shame becomes a great question. As an adult, when you fall over, because mm-hmm. speaking of, you know, crafts that we're supposed to have mastered, right. standing, standing up, up ages ago. Standing up, right. <laughs> so, so long ago we got yeah. that one down. No one's going to bring it up. No one really would be bothered. I'm sure most people, if even if they saw me, wouldn't even remember it now. I'm certainly not going to publish it to thousands of people <laughs> until they hear about this and make fun of me via DM. Don't do that. What's the deal with being our age, completely aware of what is and isn't something to be ashamed or guilty about, and that knowledge to be absolutely nothing to comfort? Like with the after hanging out with people. Ooh, I don't know. Does I- that change? Maybe. Oh, Anastasia's shaking her Anastasia's head. shaking her head. Anastasia's 60 years old, by the way, for reference. Um, uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. She's from the South. I just fell. I'm a little You're like a, southern lady. Well, you have to see a gold prospector also. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, Anastasia, she's covered in coal. <laughs> I, you just reminded me of my last great fall. <laughs> I also have a great fall story. Oh, Jesus. So my last great fall, I may have told it on the podcast before, I was on my way to work. Uh, I must have worked at Yelp at the time because I was taking the BART and uh, Patreon wasn't near a BART stop, so I wasn't going to Patreon. Okay, so last great fall, 10 years ago. That was my last great fall. Um, I've fallen since probably. I do have a lot of uh, trips and catch myself because I'm like, like I can, I have like, I'm decently, unexpectedly nimble, I guess is 
Um, you, you got you got fighters feet. But my my last great fall, like this one, was uh, uh, I was I was walking. I feel like I was also wearing white, <laughs> and it's relevant because it had like rained. <laughs> and in 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 San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, or in the Mission, there's not a lot of soil. However, there's like two patches of soil. I managed to slip in a like mud slick, <laughs> and I like slid oh. all the side of my oh. body, like the entire side of my body was just covered in mud somehow. I like my shoe was covered in mud, just the entire side of me. It was like a, uh, it was like I was a skateboard being grinded into the mud. <laughs> you got 50 50 I got 50 50 on the mud. I went home, I took off my clothes, I took a shower, I got back into my bed. <laughs> Wait, what time is it? Probably 10 a.m. Oh, okay. I got back into my bed and I was like, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. And we're going to try to start this whole day over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and just like, like re-roll, dude. We have to try. We have to start oh, anew. My Dawn character died. New I'm getting a new one. I'm going warlock. <laughs> yeah. No, literally. Yeah. That's what it felt like. It felt like I started my my character. My character died and I had to respect. Just, oh, it's just like quick look. Quick look. That didn't happen. Yeah, yeah that didn't happen actually. Save scum. False start actually. I save scummed on life. <laughs> what was your great false story? Well, I guess seeing I have, you fall <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah, that was I was watching. I had binoculars. <laughs> no, I I'm a very opposite of Jarvis. I'm very uh, not coordinated person. I fall a lot, and I am uh, much like my friend who's a baby. I'm still maybe learning how to use my limbs a little bit. Um, and so yeah, many and you reminded me of one where. I was on BART. I gotta stay away from this damn train. <laughs> <laughs> hurrying up the escalator because I don't even know why. Because uh, I remember I was specifically going up the escalator, not down. So I'm not trying to catch a train, but I'm like running up the escalator in a very packed BART station. And I fall and my knee hits that jagged edge of the escalator step. Oh. It rips my oh, jeans. The, the, as in the corner of the step, shaped like a cyber truck that yeah. all like yeah. ripped for Ooh. no pleasure. And uh, it rips my jeans. I'm bleeding. And also I feel like my knee doesn't work anymore. Oh, no. Are you hitting the, the cap or are you hitting like the funny bone equivalent? You know? Yeah, I feel like you hit it and it's like a um it's like one of those uh, tuning forks yes. where like, <laughs> where like it, it, it's just like, you're just like, this is, and you're like rendered useless for yeah. like a few a moments. Perfect like a perfect A-shop. Yeah. It was definitely not, I think it was the like sort of funny bone part of the, the front of the knee. And, but there's tons of people in there and I didn't want to look like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm fine. And I stand up. And there's a bunch of strangers being like, oh my God, are you okay? And I'm like, yes, I'm fine. And I like stand up and I like try to walk up more. And also I'm scared of being like on the ground when it, the escalator Yeah, you don't ends. want to get sucked into the escalator. Go to the underdark or whatever that <laughs> takes you. Yeah. I've got the image in my head of uh, you falling backwards for 50 years. <laughs> and I feel like just just to kind of constantly moving up. That's my life now. <laughs> um, and so I pretend I'm fine, but I'm like very obviously not <laughs> fine. Like I can't, my knee's like not functioning and I'm like trying to get it <laughs> not sucked in and like all these people keep saying, are you okay? And it's making oh, it worse because so I'm like worse. so embarrassed. That's like you're not supposed to go over to a kid and be like, oh, if they fall, you have to be like, hey, it's, Good it's job, fine. You got up or whatever. You start, you start going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my little bottom lip is quivering. <laughs> yeah. This is a, we all went Humpty Dumpty mode. We had great falls, <laughs> but we put ourselves back together again. Yeah. Wait, is the story about Humpty Dumpty is that no one can put them back together again? Correct. Yeah. Well, then we're not Humpty Dumpty. I think this is absolutely not my bit of, Unfortunately, I think it's a Gervais bit, but old one when he was funny and when he didn't know how to hate as much as he does now. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he would have. He just didn't, I guess, know about the other people. Right. He had a Humpty Dumpty bit and pointed out that at no point in that story do they ever say he's an egg. Oh, yeah. That is something we have created right. as a fiction. He's, there, who is he, though? He's that a guy. Is a, there is a mystery there or some sort of story. Well, but I guess if it's a guy's legs came off and they put it back, let me know. I think we should probably move on just because of uh, timing. We want to get to no, the topic. No, let's do 50 minutes on Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> I'm having a lovely time. 
Um, oh, uh, I should say, te- tease a uh, potentially for the Patreon episode. If uh, if my beloved wakes up in time, um, I'm going to ask if I can call her, put her on speakerphone, and she can tell the story of her last grateful, which was at your Halloween party, like two Halloween. Ooh. Ago. Today we have uh, a TikTok trend. It was just a, it's a conversation that's happening a lot on TikTok about the idea that a lot of women uh, might choose an outfit mm. because they know that men will leave them alone. Mm. And then we as men are here to decide whether or not we would leave them yeah. alone or if we'd harass. <laughs> well, that's the thing. We'd go, no, you, I, your tricks won't work on me. I'm here Must to harass try. you. I, I know you both are super into like every Friday, every Saturday, going to the clubs, Nagging. Yeah. trying to get as many numbers as possible. And then True. whoever gets the most numbers wins the night as sure. the, the night. coolest boy. I've never had a day. Coolest boy. You get to sit on the big, up. you get to sit on the high chair yeah. at dinner. You I get, get to, to be t- elevated above everybody I else. I get to tell everyone in the, uh, in the discord chat that I, um, quote, bagged abroad. <laughs> yeah, uh, she gave me a fake phone number. Turns out, goes directly to T-Mobile customer support. There's a uh, there's like an employee of the month style like <laughs> cork board that has the best the best boy the the what do we call it the biggest baddest boy the biggest yeah. baddest boy yeah, the biggest baddest it's boy. like when you get to take the like goldfish to your place over the weekend mm-hmm. of school or something except it's a fedora yeah you get to take the goldfish home and then uh, and then your dad said uh, it. Went, it got flushed down the train because uh, it wanted to go on a field trip. But, <laughs> yeah. And it'll be back, but we don't know when. And you get a little, it looks like a, a sheriff's star badge, right. but it says, I'm very strong on it. I it wore, says, I feel good actually all the time. I wore a neon green sash in fifth grade because <laughs> uh, I was a I was a part of the safety patrol, I think it was called. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So I was a fucking narc, dude. Brother, that is <laughs> They were like hall monitor ass, like narc boys. But the thing that I found interesting about this is the um, disagreement amongst women of what men like and don't like. The other thing is like. Interesting. I feel like men are so, they're always giving their like um, unsolicited opinion. So I feel like, you know how men do the smile more, you should smile more thing. I feel like I'm worried. I'll just say that I'm worried that someone could be wearing a man repellent outfit and someone could be like, let me give you a few notes. Yeah, You shouldn't wear this outfit because uh, it's repelling men. So <laughs> you should actually wear a corset. He's wearing one of the two H&M hoodies he has, sweat marks on both. Yellowed on the corners, mm-hmm. frayed. No, the underwear is more holes than fabric at that point. And he's like, actually, you need listen to me. Excuse me, come back. Okay, take your headphones out. I have a <laughs> Let's see what man repellent outfits. I see a lot of discourse on TikTok about the male repellent outfit, and usually it's just like a cute little red cardigan and like maybe some ballet flats. But when I tell you, I'm going to do you one more. This is the ultimate male repellent formula. Because whenever I go out in public dressed like this, no man dares to approach me because they genuinely all think I'm a witch or something. All you have to do is dress like you don't belong in this era and then add as many ruffles and frills as possible and then put on every single piece of jewelry in your closet. Trust me, whenever I go out in public wearing a tank top and cut off shorts, I feel like I get harassed. But um, whenever I wear this, like it, it works. I'm just gonna say that and yeah. You know, the feedback I hear a lot, or the comment I've heard a lot, you know, is like a lot of the people we know, they go to a Ren Fair. And the one thing they say is, repelled, no annoying people <laughs> coming up to me, yeah. asking you to photos with me, putting their arm around me on my lower waist. That what never are the com- I mean, look, this is like, I can't speak to her experience, but because who am I to deny it? I'll, well, I'll say it, sickening. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I obviously am repelled. Yeah, we cut it, but you actually threw up a little bit. Oh, yeah, because I because to me this person looks like a goddess. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't, uh, and so I'm like I it, I guess Top that comment. I would be repelled in that I'd be so uh, I I wouldn't feel like I belong to exist in the same <laughs> ethereal plane I as would this be person. Repelled into the ground, praying. Okay, Bestie. like all of these are like <laughs> you look incredible. You're a oh, goddess. You're you know. As a male, we are indeed scared to approach someone who looks like a goddess who could strike me down with a bolt of lightning. 
Oh, and then no. Oh, okay, wait. They did say, I'll be completely honest, after reading all the comments under this video, I can acknowledge that this TikTok may have backfired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. Cause I mean, I but we've gotta we've gotta see more to understand. Um also, I mean, I do think there's something to like I, uh, I wouldn't appro approach in the street at all. I think yeah, there I was is gonna a say, weird the normal, size. like the man repelling outfit that works on me is anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. being in the street. I, I don't want to come up right. to strangers. I'm so afraid because I don't want to inconvenience someone. That's, I know I'm repellent it in would that take, way. I'm always repelled. It, I, need, I need someone to say, hey, come <laughs> talk to me. Hey. Okay. Obey. Yeah. I need to be summoned like a familiar to their side. Right. They have to say me, call me by name, <laughs> by my government <laughs> name. Three times in a row. <laughs> Mistress, you summoned me. Absolutely. We, we are not a decent, a good sample size. Plenty of people oh, do come up and Oh, in I public. know. Every time I, but yeah, I think that's talk what, to. It's just, that's just what's so interesting about this is like the experiment sample size of people that would normally come up to them, say, is always going to be the most annoying and creepiest people. Yeah, it's and who they, can't read those cues, and right? And they're probably way over-indexed on outfits and like presentation. They're probably like, oh, long dress, she's, uh, she's, uh, she's overly, she's not right for me. It sucks if this even has to be like a discussion, you know? Yeah. Like the, the, the women feel, the, like not feel the need, but like have to do something like this to get men out of their business because every woman I know is like constantly like getting unwanted like uh, interaction yeah. from random dudes. And not able to, well, more often than not, the stories they tell are of them saying no and that not being the end of the conversation. It's not a like someone coming up and being like, hey, um, would you like to go out sometime? And saying like, or oh, can I have your Instagram? Is apparently an epidemic right now. Yeah. I guess to buffer asking for a phone number. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's just an Instagram. Oh, I mean, Katie has a hilarious story about oh, that. The, the pokey go. Um, but first, Anastasia, what's your experience with this? This is probably a thing. And like, it's, it is kind of funny. The, the outfits that I wear that get compliments from women are very different than the ones that I think men uh, would be attracted to. Um, and, and that's based on just like, I guess, I don't know what men are attracted to. <laughs> well, I think there's a mythology but, that's been built up amongst anyone that would talk to you or any guy that would like chip in out on like, well, actually this is what that outfit means objectively. Yeah. Are usually the kind of people that have like an algorithmic view of women and are like, women actually wear makeup to attract them. Yeah. That's what it's for. But they use a push-up bra it because it simulates I think a lot of men don't want women to wear too much makeup. Well, they, they want a natural look, but but with makeup on. They want men, the natural version of what they think natural is. Right. It's like they don't want to natural. notice. They're like, if I, be, what I'm hearing is that men have given women a very narrow space to yes. occupy that is acceptable to them. But, um... Two things. First of all, Jarvis and I were on an improv team with a guy who uh, once said, I know people say you shouldn't approach random women, but I've had a lot of success doing that. <laughs> and I was like, pardon? And I, I was asking him questions about it because I was thoroughly creeped out by him. And um, this was an improv team that was from a class, right? We didn't like choose to be on the team with him or did we? We didn't choose to be on oh, the okay. team, but we were placed on a team. Got with it. Him. Got it. Got it. And, and you might right? not, this was like very late in the game that he said this. Mm. So I feel like maybe you weren't with us as much. You know at who that I, point. I have a guess of who it is. Yeah. We shouldn't say the name on the show, was but yeah. I knew it. That's the name for it. I'll say it without saying the name. That is. Perfect name for the guy. I see, I didn't know that, but it makes sense. It's in the realm of like Adrian. Yeah, I really? feel like mm. he had, he was very quiet. And the more I got to Wait, know what him. What was Dwight Schrute's uh, uh, brother's name? Mose. Mose. It was like a name like that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and, and so I asked him a lot of questions about like, who do you choose to go up to? When do you go up to them? Like, how do you approach it? Blah, blah, blah. And Sounds like you're looking for tips, but like, man, how, where would I even find these people? <laughs> what, <laughs> but what? I was and kind of, <laughs> I was curious because I was like, and also what is success to you? In this? That's the thing. And yeah. especially ratio wise, if he speaks to a thousand people, five of them say yes, that's a lot of people. I yeah. think it's like, and I, I guess there's not, I don't think there needs to be a hard and fast rule about whether or not you can approach people in public. 
But I think that if you are to approach people in public, you have to do so without the expectation of a romantic interaction. And the context of what is public? Are and they in motion? Is it in a train In the station? context of am I inconveniencing someone? Yeah. yeah. But his his examples were inconvenient. It's like on BART, <laughs> on the way to work, a woman sitting by herself at a cafe that I'm walking past. Like on this, you know, I mean, on an out, pick outdoor Pickup artist mythology includes It does like, feel like they, that. He, he actually had that coating, yeah. I think. Yeah. They do that to, to, so you'll sit next to them. He would wear a, like a, you know, a leather jacket that just feels like it's like the secret or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's uh, like, this is my flair, so someone thinks I'm interesting. Exactly. A leather um, jacket and like some jeans called like Revi. <laughs> Revi t- 911. <laughs> But, but as far as like the way I dress and my experience with this, I don't know if this a- is actually true. Like I've never done a study on it, but my brain tells me that like I prefer to dress kind of androgynously or like more masculine than maybe some women do. And that that is my brain being like, we'll be left alone mm. the way that we dress. And also having short hair versus long hair. I think straight men tend to like long hair and having short hair. And the, the next TikTok we'll watch at first I thought she had a shaved head and I was like, that's how you do it. (laughs) Have a shaved head, but she doesn't. Just cause dudes like it's the type of thing that a guy goes viral every week going like, um, I can't believe women do this. Why would they? Why would they get yeah. rid of their beautiful locks? Yeah, I uh, I think there's a number of signifiers that saying you like them as cis straight guy is performance for guys. Oh, triple G tits. Whoa, that's that's exactly what I want. Has nothing to do with their actual preferences or interests. It is for the locker room yeah. kind of shit. Right. And same goes, I think hair is in there. I think makeup is in there. I think it, it, they all fall into the same category because none of, it's like when uh, really anyone talks about their type. Yeah. Everyone I've ever heard talk about a type, if they end up in a long term relationship, it's never with that person. Mm-hmm. Because having a type and having specificity is right. just us trying to like create order in a chaotic world. Yeah. Say, so, yeah, no, this is what I like and this is good to me. And then you fall in love with something completely different. Yes. Yeah. You don't know what you like. Uh, well, I'm a tomboy boy. I like and, a tomboy. I like a short haircut. And that's, yeah, me too. that is to say that in my brain, my brain is like, yeah, we will get less um, hassle if we dress and we is me and my brain. <laughs> right. <laughs> if we, the royal we. Well, we, if and, we your, dress, and you're the ghost that follows you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my demon that sits on my shoulder. Yeah. Um, if, if I dress uh, in a more masculine way, but the truth is, I'll still get unwanted attention. Right. Well, it's probably just a different demo of people being like, well, they're, they're, they're dressing androgynously because they are a different kind of woman that wants me to yeah. approach them. I bet they're a freak in a different, you know, oh, I don't yeah. know. They're like, trying to hide Yeah, because I feel like guys are always like, ooh, now you're you're giving me a challenge. Yeah. And it's or like, it's, no, this is, I just don't want to be, it's like soft that's boys. reverse psychology. You actually want me to be talking to you. <laughs> and that's why you're telling me to leave you alone. You might escape bros, but then they'll just Can be I replaced. take a seat? <laughs> May I, madam, move aside. <laughs> move aside. Prince yeah. Charming has arrived. I Stumbles. would need, I feel like I would need such, I feel like it's a little bit different if you're at like a bar where like that's the vibe mm-hmm. of the bar, but in just, just raw dogging in public. <laughs> Like the I would, closest is a coffee place. That feels. I like would the, need such a strong signal, yeah. in order to engage. Like you're getting eyes and a smile and a come hither stare. I think if they lit- they would literally have to initiate conversation mm-hmm. at least, kind of passively, be like, uh, oh, not like, hey, can I grab that chair and leave? Yeah, but something in the vein of like, is anyone sitting here? There's a or lot of I open like seats or and whatever. Like, yeah, what are you reading? And then it's like, okay. Worst case scenario, this is a nice chat to have with a stranger. Mm -hmm. Maybe I make a friend. Maybe it's just a chat. Maybe we go on a date. It could be anything, but I don't need to like object or force it either way. Mm -hmm. Also, it's very, I think it's very, it is attractive when people take initiative in general in life, Mm -hmm. but like, it's almost like kissing where it's like, yeah, the initiative can be attractive, but you have to be right. 
It's yeah. very you know, unattractive if you don't if want to. If you're do wrong, it. yeah. Have I ever told you guys about the bus guy? <laughs> the bus guy? Yeah. So there, there was, I when I first moved to LA, I didn't have a car. I rode the bus. and Oh, and you were the bus guy. <laughs> I, I was the bus guy. The bus bastard. And, um, and I, uh, one time I was on a bus. I had just gotten my eyebrows waxed. And so my face was bright red. <laughs> and I was going from work, like an eight hour shift at work to a writing class and knew I wouldn't have time to eat dinner. So I had Cheez-Its in my purse and I was shoveling them into my mouth from my purse. Big okay? relate, big relate, yeah. And in my, and I was wearing just like jeans and, you know, nothing uh, and nothing else. <laughs> Whoa, a single red rose in my teeth. <laughs> and um, an a attractive man sits next to me. I immediately clock him. Hey, this guy's attractive. Whatever. Attractive bus guy. We're both looking at our phones. So no conversation is happening, but then something wild happens on the bus where this guy gets on, he's screaming. He has a, he's looking for, uh, he's looking for a group of teenage girls who he's been seeing in vision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to find them. He has an indiscernible accent. He, has he an grabs indiscernible one accent. of them, throws yeah. them at the top of the His train. His mouth movements do not he match goes, the I'm words looking he's for the girls. <laughs> Where are the girls? I'm, I'm going to find this woman <laughs> as soon as I can. This weird woman is telling everyone to get off the train. I mean, bus. <laughs> um, and and uh, this guy is a massive, like, magnum... A Costco size vodka bottle in his back. I was so concerned about where those so going. many cats. <laughs> the only and plus, Anastasia is off camera. She was gesturing to her head. Yeah, Without yeah. that, I think say he was a dickhead. And the handsome guy next to me turns to me and goes, "Oh my god, that's the biggest bottle <laughs> bottle of vodka I've ever seen." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's wild." And is it, is it is that all that's in the bag? Yeah, it's just like <laughs> sticking out the top of his. It's like backpack. a it's like cloud sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is very anime. He's gonna like lean over. It's gonna de the yeah. compartments are gonna open. He's just gonna fire sky. He's an there. alcoholic, but in an anime way. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then as we talk about this incident, we kind of look at each other and start having a normal conversation. I'm like, oh, you're. I, I can see on your phone you're watching a Miranda July video. I love Miranda July. We're like chit-chatting, blah, blah, blah. Realize we have a bunch of in common. And he says, hey, I know this is weird. I know we're on a bus. And because I, I, I said, oh, the next stop is mine. He goes, I know this is weird. I know we're on a bus. Can I give you my number? You can text me if you want or not. What It's up to you. Can I give you my number? It's really good. It's really I like good. That. I like that. And he... I was like, whoa, okay, give me your number. I thought I was repellent. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have so, to put on more than pants next time while I'm eating my Cheetos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess <laughs> I'm eating my Cheez-Its. So then I, I texted him kind of almost immediately because we had such a nice conversation. We had so much in common and we dated for a little bit. It didn't work out and it was totally fine. But I was like, that was maybe the only time that I met a stranger in a place where I'm like trying to get somewhere, like going mm -hmm. about my day where it didn't feel aggressive. It didn't feel like predatory. It, like at no time was he was like, damn girl, I like your hips or whatever yeah, 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 weird yeah. things. I like Jesus. Okay, scratching that off my pickup lines. <laughs> I like Jesus. Do you yeah. like me to go fish? I go fish. That's, that's me normally. Uh, He's reaching his arm out slowly to get some of them. Um, let's watch this. Cause I, this, I'm, this I'm curious goes. what you think about these outfits, because I have thoughts on these outfits. The man repellent outfit. I spoke about this last week, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about it, because one, people were a little confused, but two, people liked the look. From what I've observed, and in my opinion, I think a man repellent outfit is something that sits outside of what the male gaze deems as sexy or attractive. It can be things that are either typically described as matronly, masculine. Think of every TikTok you've ever seen of a man saying what he doesn't like on a woman, typically being asked by another male interviewer those items. In these interviews, I've seen them yap about anything from maxi skirts to mom jeans to docks to Birkenstocks to hating girls that are just into that star sign stuff, bows, anything. I've seen it all. I would say that this aesthetic, if you could even call it that, comprises of a lot of those pieces because 
girls do enjoy wearing them and the purpose isn't necessarily to just be attractive. A lot of people ask me where they can find stuff like this aesthetic. There's honestly so much already on TikTok. I also do think elements of it are very much so like the eclectic grandpa style. I guess the guys are just not rocking with grandpa, but this is like that kind of look in a way. And into different silhouettes, experiment, have fun. And I think that that's just the best way to approach style all around. Based, based, it's based. it's cool. I mean, I, I think the only thing that's sad to me is like, it feels like once again, the male gaze is warping you know, like what women are wearing or choosing to wear, but in a different way. It is still the lens that's used yeah. by everyone to determine the But it's like, utility. how do you avoid it? Because like the men won't stop, you know? So that's what I kind of liked at the end of what she said. She was like, just wear what you want to wear. And right. it's because I think the truth is um, it doesn't matter really. All of her outfits that she was claiming were men repellent. I'm like, those are cute. The, I yeah, don't I was like, think... I like love dots. Yeah. The cut to glasses, the glasses one was funny to me just because of the glasses. Yeah. She was in like a <laughs> skirt and then it looked like she was a different person. <laughs> I was like, oh, whoa, that's a way to rebel is disappear and be replaced. I don't, I do not want to be one of those like, you know, I'm not like other guys, whatever. It is very frustrating that these are the guys out there being the marketing they're being the, the advocate. And I don't mean like, men. And not in a, the guys I'm who different. are saying their thoughts I'm to not like men those, about what they're into. I do not want to do soft boy. I'm not like the, those guys. I think most people are not like those guys. Right. There are plenty of men, uh, do, do whatever shitty stuff, blah, blah, blah. But the approaching people in public and needing an outfit to repel them, it's kind of in the vein of like getting a mosquito net where if you specifically don't want to be, be bit by mosquitoes, right, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Most other bugs are annoying, but they're not going to come up to you and bite you. That is like very specifically, hey, plenty of annoying bugs. Only one of them really like is a blood sucking kind right. of bug. <laughs> this is repellent for that one specifically. I just, it is very frustrating that, I mean, it feels like the dynamic now is either these people are approaching because you aren't doing it right or they're approaching, uh, we're not approaching because you uh, wore the right thing. I'm curious what people like tw TikTok. It's a, de it's a decent kind of portal into different lives sometimes, you know? Sure, the algorithm is ultra curated and it's I mean, what you want to see, et cetera. But also, I just never would have even thought of this, right? And that part of that is my privilege. So, of not having to engage with issues like that. Thumbs up, fellas. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I do wonder how much of this is theoretical versus like, yeah, it was a good bunch of guys are coming up to me a bunch. So I made these outfits doesn't happen anymore. Well, even like I was saying, like my brain tells me that the way I dress means I'm not going to get as much attention. And that's just like actually not true in practice, but I still, you know, it's like in my brain. So yeah. I feel like that might be true too with like some of these women. Also, you're right. Like some of it might just be like TikTok trend. Here's my theoretical outfits it, that would. Hopefully they do. I mean, even if they're just theoretical, they're trying, you know. Yeah. Men hate my outfits. They're so mad that I like, I'm not like hot, like how I was in Uncut Dreams. I hear that all the time because the girls love it. It's a Julia Fox, uh, Julia Fox audio. Oh. That's okay. That's what it is because there was a comment. It was like, okay, it took me a second. Uh, the There was a comment on the previous one we watched where somebody was like, insert that sound from Uncut Gems. I and I was like, what are they, or from Julia Fox. And I was like, oh, what are they talking about? And I guess that's the audio. If you are right now, uh, 2020, 2024, a guy who's like, a woman in pants, are you a time traveler? <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, even the other lady who said like matronly or masculine outfits that don't show a lot of skin. Um, it's like, I guess I get that in theory, well, but. For the first thing I think of is Billie Eilish. Right. Who like, um, you know, had talked about not wanting uh, their body to be perceived and then like getting all this unwanted attention, especially oh, when, they were, 16, when they were, yeah, a minor. And then uh, like, choose chose to dress in like baggier form clothes right and that sucks like it's kind of this whole thing where it's yeah. like warping warping yourself to the male gaze either 
uh, on one one way or the other, you know? And then the reaction was, instead, I feel like I, all the worst comments for that shit were always just like, don't wear that. Well, don't the, wear the baggy, that's not fair to me. I think uh, the other side of the comments are like, she's hot. Despite, you know, this, despite this, in the a libertarian and like, that that, and I remember uh, Billie Eilish. There, while they were still underage, there was like a leaked uh, TikTok or or Instagram photo from a friend or something where she was in a hot tub wearing a swimsuit. And people were so weird about There's it. There's also the, uh, the the disgusting like paparazzi stuff. I think that that was something that uh, Billy Eilish had talked about was like getting photographed by the paparazzi in motion, and then people are just like objectifying their body and stuff. It's just like so gross. But I suppose that's like uh, it's all, it's going to be this experience on steroids when you're in the in the public eye, especially at that tier, especially as. Uh, femme presenting and especially uh, that famous like the, mm -hmm. the where it's like everything has to be boosted and all harassment has to be more intense all threats have to be scarier all I don't know all kudos have to be hyperbolic all the yes people around you have to be more yes people it's like nothing's legitimate and, and I guess all of the hey uh, I see you're wearing push-up bra for me a guy mm -hmm. that you don't know mm -hmm. is replaced instead with like why aren't you wearing a push-up bra for a guy like me? You don't know. This is misandry. It's so funny to me that you can wear certain things. It'll be like a literal man repellent. I think this is so funny because it's so true. Men love the most basic outfit you've ever put together when you are like, oh, I don't know what to wear. And I'll just, you'll just wear something comfortable, something very go-to, something that is not pushing the boundaries at all. I have two photos that I have on my dating app profiles. And they are my top liked photos and let me show you them. Okay, so here's the first one. I don't really use it anymore because it's kind of old, but when I did have it on all my profiles, it was easily the top liked photo. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, let me make myself Whoa. smaller. Like, <laughs> it's fine, but Come super back. basic, just the like shorts and a crop top. And my ahead. top isn't even like really well fitting. As you can see, it's like riding up my bra. Like, it doesn't look that great. But men went crazy for this photo. Let me get the other one. Okay, so the second one, it is also kind of old, but I still use it because it is my top liked photo. Every single person, almost every single person that I match with likes this photo. And for what? Like, I look cool as fuck. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I look sick, but I'm just wearing blue jeans and a black crop. I wear this outfit all the time in real life and guys always comment that they love that outfit. Is it just because it's like a classic? Because I mean, like, again, I'm like, I don't, I guess it's hard to put myself into this headspace, but. I mean, I think she's right. She looks cool. I don't think it has to be. Also, I think like, even in though she's not necessarily fancy or showing skin, like you can see her body in it. And it's yeah. like. I, I, and then again, just to reiterate, I truly don't think it matters what you wear. Yeah. I do get the idea that like, if you're more, uh, fashionably adventurous, that could like communicate something, I guess Yeah. to someone who, I don't know. I feel like there's not, I feel like there's not much that's going to stop a dude from approaching a woman. Uh, I mean, the dating app one is, it's, uh, that's also an interesting sample size one, because a lot of the time I feel like picture selection and prompt selection are more than just the thing you like the most. Yeah. It is what you think is the most appropriate thing to start off with. It's what you think they will like you liking the most. Mm -hmm. And also it's, I don't know, it seems unremarkable to me that the least avant-garde thing is the thing that people are liking more. Well, That's like yeah, the, it's like the, the most accessible, <laughs> for lack of a better word. But like, I, I also remember seeing a woman who's like, um, uh, what's it called? Like Gothic Lolita style dress where it's like, you know, the like Japanese, like super hyper feminine dresses mm. with like, Oh, like that platform that shoes. And the, oh, I don't know the, the part of Harajuku like there. Yeah. That kind of thing? So, uh, oh, I remember God. seeing a girl showing her dressing like that and being like, guys hate this. 
And it's like, yeah, I guess I could see that, but only because you're in such a specific subculture Mm -hmm. that maybe only people who are also in that subculture will be into it. I think anime lovers would be really into it, but I would say that with no judgment to anime, I would just say numbers wise, fewer of them, but also maybe a little less uh, socially aggressive, outwardly, not saying better people, but Mm -hmm. maybe a little less like the sample size of people that would be excited about like, even like the outfit, the Ren Fair type outfit that one person was in. Yeah. It's like, well, I think it's also showing off a degree, and this is, I mean, the cynical part of me, I guess. It's showing off a degree of confidence mm-hmm. that a lot of those kind of hucksters that would come up and pick up artist stuff mm-hmm. probably want to filter out. I'm sure that's right. probably one of the, the game, right? Yeah, that probably, that is part of the like game. rule 50 of war in the game. Yeah. D- find a woman who is not is dressed plainly because they won't have the confidence to wear a summer dress right. or something. Let's watch this last one. I saw a video of a girl saying how some outfits are man repellent, and I think this is so true. It's basically like outfits that are the opposite of male gaze. So they won't come up to you, they won't check you out, none of that. So these are my man repellent outfits. And I can confirm I got zero male attention in these fits. Starting off with this outfit of mine that was all over Twitter, I feel like demonias are like instant man repellent. Same with anything Sanrio related and especially a corset. Uh, so it- what is? is it a don- I was like, is that a Magic the Gathering set? <laughs> yeah. Medication? Um, that's my D&D character. Yeah, that's Dominaria. <laughs> uh, the, I would say though that wearing a mask may be a pretty effective repellent too. <laughs> oh my God. Um, not that, not for the any sort of political reason or anything like that, but I'm like... Um, it, the less of your face you can see, I feel like that makes you less. It's like headphones. Like if I'm, <laughs> yeah, if I'm, I'm not dressed engaging. like in da- my Daft Punk costume, <laughs> yeah, I do I'm, feel like I'm going to get approached less. I bet MF Doom never got harassed in this Yeah, yeah Demonias, I just looked it up. Demonias are the, the, the Shoes. boots. Oh, cool. Are they're you know, they're uh, this like brand of shoe that's kind of like... Whoa. Oh, that's sick. I mean, this is kind of Harajuku-esque. Oh, it's too tall. <laughs> Run. I'm, not, I'm being repelled. So with those three things, this was instant man repellent. I would say I'm just like a kid in this outfit, so I think that's man repellent enough, unless they're like a really creepy man. I don't think I'm just like a kid, yeah, but like there are like the these aspects that have like the cute little earmuffs on, and the hoodie has like a character on it. The vibe, it's just, it's man repellent. Okay, this is a recent look. This was my Galentine's Day look from Valentine's Day. And this is man repellent because of the corset. And I feel like this is such like a girl's outfit. My boyfriend said he didn't like this outfit on my Instagram. So I think that's proof that it's man repellent. Why do you say that? The- yeah, it was so rude. On that's- your Instagram? Like in public? Publicly that is- being like, you look dumb. I don't like <laughs> it. That is such a funny, a, a kind of a self-report in having the worst taste in, like conceivable. Yeah, my boyfriend threw a shoe at me when I did that. <laughs> you know, because man- <laughs> it's man. Repellent. But maybe this is just like the name of a new, like not a new aesthetic, but maybe this is a uh, like the like it, it almost feels like a tr- aesthetic trend. Yeah. Um, oh, 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 someone just said, uh, guys, this can only be taken as a joke. The only man repellent outfit is when, you, oh, yeah, there we go. The only true fit that repels somewhat is Adam Sandler outfits, but even then, and then there's nine replies. Eilish what do the nine fit, replies right? say? Facts. Lots of laughing face. This doesn't even work. I wear dirty oversized sweats and a three X shirt. So stressful. I know it's like the it's it's. By the way, man, I know. I'm sure it's not reading this way. Maybe there's a stupid comment here and there. It is. I'm speaking from entirely a place of sympathy, not empathy. I do not know. Right. Exactly. You don't. You can't know that. And I think it's kind of fascinating. I mean, kind of with this one. Both Her of the style. first outfits look like a little kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, yeah, yeah. she has like a very like little kid style. That's an interesting way to put man repellent. It's it's more like putting like non-criminal repellent. <laughs> yeah. You know what's funny is like I sometimes joke around that my style is toddler core. Mm. <laughs> and but 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 boy toddler. Yeah. Like I wear like 
crew. You're uh, currently wearing a Mickey Mouse shirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, genuinely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are currently wearing a blue Mickey Mouse shirt. This is not a joke. And like, you have a bib, like, some um, applesauce on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. You're wearing those glasses that wrap around like goggles. And You've got the tour. Gouda cheese and the wax. <laughs> Jarvis <laughs> baby did bell. watch me eat a baby bell one time. I was like, I fucking love these things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we were talking about how like growing up, like without the means to like have that kind of thing, you, you would see it as like a class, like a class signifier. Oh, with the wax with being the removed. wax. Like oh. I was like, oh, the ri- that is for the rich. Yeah, <laughs> like, like in my silver head. platter cheese. This is yeah. like the rich kid version of string cheese. Right. Like we just get string oh. cheese that's that literally tastes like wax. Yeah. And you get the actually good little gouda. It's like, oh uh, yeah, so my cheese is it has a sleeve. It's a <laughs> it's a sleeve cheese. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't allow it to be ruined by the elements. A plastic wrapping on your Ooh. cheese. <laughs> I didn't know I was with peasants. Well, uh, that was fun. That was interesting. I mean, I'm always curious what's going on on the internet, and I feel like we learned something today. I want to. I think I, they, genuinely, I'm curious about the comments uh, from our audience because I want to be in. I want to be educated. I want info. Yeah, I hope we didn't come off. I don't think we well, came I mean, off as like not like because we're not experts here. We're just trying to understand. If yeah, I would <laughs> love to hear people's experience with this because uh, it is something that like i i get the sense that people are like i want to try i have a i have a fear of something and i want to try and take control of the situation right yeah yeah you have agency yeah exactly um cool well uh does the fun stop here well the fun stops right here on youtube.com slash sadboys pod but we are going to be heading over to our patreon at patreon.com slash sadboys where we do our exclusive patreon episode of sadboys nights and that's where uh is that where katie's calling in yes we're gonna have a certain call in person to tell a story about the time that they fell over eight shit and a time they were approached by a very weird but ultimately fun i learned this story from one of our dear friends while we were uh walking around santa monica for go fest uh global and it was a wild story of a man uh a very clueless man approaching a woman maybe the most sincere moment of guy coming up in public but certainly not very threatening as it developed it's wild so we'll uh we'll hear uh the story from ground zero uh (laughs) She's in New York. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we allowed to say it's Katie? Yeah. Okay, so Skatey420 will be joining us to tell us a story about this man. And that about does it for this episode of Sad Boys. Well, thanks to Anastasia for uh, joining us off camera and for Jacob standing uh, ominously <laughs> above us, yeah, looming over us. I always wonder what the catalyst is for when he does or doesn't stand. <laughs> right. You know? um, Sometimes I have iced coffee and I get antsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. We end every episode of Sad Boys with a particular phrase. We love you. And we're sorry. Boom. Boom. Just a little bit earlier, we were sharing stories on the main show about uh, two topics that are both germane to you. One is falling over as an adult. Yeah. Uh, it was at one of Jarvis's Halloween parties, and I was dressed as Garfield. <laughs> it was a... <laughs> I remember this. It was a really big Garfield costume. <laughs> um, there was like a bunch of stuffing in it and stuff. Like I, it made me really fat and it was kind of up a hill and I was on top of it and um, I went to sit down and the chair was a bit too close to the edge. And oh, I think no. I like also tripped a bit on my tail because I had... <laughs> <laughs> Because you are a cat. <laughs> and you went, yowch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a huge fall, like, in a way where, like, it wasn't just the people near me saw it. It was everyone who was outside at the time. Oh, no. Gucci girl, Gucci girl, how you doing? How you moving, girl? Moving, girl, how's your day looking? That future girl, future girl, yeah, we on now. Take my money, go away, oh, you want it. Guys are rich for me.